Alright, and that concludes the entire matches for the day. But we still have a lot more in store for you guys. Uh, for example, we're gonna have some recaps coming in, and after that, the map, uh, map pool showcase. But yeah, we're gonna have a quick rundown of today's events in just a moment. Some really, really good matches today. We've seen what I think that's three tiebreakers today out of eight matches. Like almost half the matches went to the wire. Indeed, really interesting matches uh, not, uh, today. But I'm, I'm definitely gonna try to look uh, uh, out for the, for the just looking at the votes for some of the matches I missed because we really got some cool matches today. A lot of tiebreakers. I think that was the third tiebreaker of the day or the fourth one. Um, I show you now. Oh, it was the third one. We just got the information in. Ah. So for the first slide, or is it is the dead bit gonna, gonna come in for the uh, statistician side? Hello. There we Hello. go. What's up, man? Still working on other stuff. Oh, fair, fair. Just waiting for the last one to come through now, but it looks like the first one is. Yep. I can have a one. quick have a quick word about this one because this is my team, but yeah. I mean, the match versus Norway, it was mighty close. It's such a back and forth one. Uh, as UK had a really strong uh, lead going into it, taking it 4 2, but then Norway doing the thing, bringing it back. It ended up needing a tiebreaker then to split us up. Such a back and forth game. Honestly, for, from my end, winning that was, I think I can safely say that's the best match I've ever played in. I don't think I've ever been so relieved after a tiebreaker in my life. Massive props to Norway. I, I mean, Norway have so many good players and they really showed it. We had to pull everything out to take that win. I'm so, so proud of the uh, the UK players, man. The UK peeps making that happen. Yeah, I definitely see the uh, team effort coming in for the tiebreaker there for your team, giving you the win in the end. But you know, now you've got to face the next powerhouse, which is going to be Brazil, <laughs> we, which we've just seen. So I'm going to wish you good luck on that one. Oh, thanks, man. Well, I'll try. Just insane. But yeah, um, the next one we could talk about was uh, Finland's uh, performance in their match. That Hippie. was a pretty good match to watch. I enjoyed that one. Yeah, I mean. Finland popping off. I mean, Hippiri. Wow. Like, I think he's probably the happy. performer of the entire weekend. Like, he got top score in five of the seven matches. Maps, sorry. Just the MVP. I mean, I, he did so well in the groups, and uh, I wasn't sure if he'd be able to keep that up as the tournament went on with Finland ent entering an uncharted territory, but. Stepping up to the plate, pretty incredible to be to be honest. I think the other thing was um, what was oh yes the wipe on the hidden, that was a big shock. Along with the um, the really close scoring connect, like those three things are just unbelievable. I mean, Ryujin, yeah, that one has just... It's either gone brilliant for a team or it's just been an absolute car crash because of that drain. But yeah. Well, a really good performance by him. Uh, we're going to definitely look forward to seeing some more next week. But they, they definitely are going to have to try even harder against the more... Uh, against even better teams. All 
Okay, so yeah, after that we had the uh, Canada vs. Italy match, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. Well, Canada... Wow, like, <laughs> Canada really stepped up. Like, they're the only 5-0 sweep of the entire tournament. Well, this round, rather. Just, Canada really stepped up this time after dropping out against uh, Germany last week. Really bringing it back. I'm really interested to see how they do against Poland, because that one... I think that one could be uh, an upset threat, I think, if they play like that. Yeah, it was definitely a really... Uh... Oh, sorry, it was a pretty good match to watch. Um, first sweep since we left the group stage, actually, because it wasn't last week either. Mm -hmm, yeah, it's like, it, even some of the, uh, the last one we had, like, what is it, I think, uh, yeah, Korea played Italy, and not even Korea could sweep Italy. So that just shows how good Canada played today. Oh, indeed. Leaving, leaving no room for any weaknesses. The way Aza played and some of those hiddens as well. His accuracy was on point the entire time. I know that's not really a surprise because he's you know, more focused on playing hard rock and dealing with higher overall difficulty, but it's so impressive to see that consistently on multiple maps. He just seemed so comfortable when he was playing in that match. Indeed, comfortable and prepared. Those are two really important factors in tournaments. Next one we're going to be looking at is the one of the mats we just watched and wow what a match that was i knew it was going to be close but that was incredibly close yeah i mean just the way it started was just having like a thirty thousand points difference and then the next map also being around fifty thousand points uh it it was just insanely close from the beginning to the end uh, just the only reason why one team won on over the other was because one player made a mistake and that was pretty much it. It was a pretty, pretty cool map uh, match uh, to look at, definitely. Going from 3-0 down, Brazil just bringing it back to 3-3. Seeing a comeback like that's always just... It's brilliant because, you know, I mean, you know this for a while because me and you have played in a bunch of tournaments. When you're down that far, it can be hard to sort of believe you can bring it back. So it's just props to Brazil for not just caving in and saying, oh, we did well, that's it, we're done. They pushed it all the way to tiebreaker and they could have easily taken that tiebreaker. It was pretty incredible stuff. Indeed. Well, that performance by Toy pretty much uh, destroyed the dreams right here and there. But who knows, they might even come back for the finals or might meet once again in the, uh, in the losers' finals if the USA is going to lose next time around. No, anything can really happen, and I definitely would look forward to something like those two teams meeting again in a later stage of the tournament. Um, yeah, so the last one we've got is just a nice quick overview of the weekend maps and the picks and bans. So, sadly, yet thought. again, we had one map that was just not picked at all. Spare a thought for a loom escape. No love, just got one ban. It only got eight. <laughs> like that Supercell map in the uh, the last round. Just no, it was, that was the group stage, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, just... it was actually last last time around, last map, map pull around, round of six sixteen. Oh, got it. Okay, so one. Yeah, oh, so it was. Hoshi, Hoshi got um no pick from ban, but yeah. This time instead of hard rock, it was no mod. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of surprising, actually. Again, a no mod map. Or at least, you know, people favouring mods over the no mods and seeing a no mod map not picked at all. I mean, Scarlet Rose, that map is not a safe pick. We saw that three times and we didn't see Illume Escape once. Now, to say Illume Escape, I mean, apart from the start having some nasty square patterns, apart from that, it's pretty safe, but no one picked it. Yeah, well, it's mostly because it's a map you retry because you mess up the beginning and can retry really quickly. Um, and that's why you see a bunch of scores on it, actually. If it, if those squares were at the end, you maybe might see a, a lot less scores on it. I was actually end. surprised at the amount of picks none of mine got. Yeah, the most picked free mod map there. I thought that was going to get just perma-banned. I didn't think it'd get that many I picks. Didn't, but... <laughs> I think it'd get perma-banned, but I didn't expect it to be popular. <laughs> it, it's what? very the opposite of what maps are today, and I don't think many people would be so eager to play it. 
because I think I think DJ Pop used to map in like grid size zero. Not well, that. I think it was like grid size one back then because it wasn't a zero. It's just so, I say, just so unlike maps today. I just didn't think it'd get that much play, but hey, people going for it anyway. So props to them. I'm glad to see it. Yeah, gotta 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 love the appreciation for the old stuff. Get those classics in it. It was pretty much uh, the grave visited uh, visited from from I don't know 2008 or something or along the lines of that. Well, it might not be that old, but still, it's pretty it's pretty nice to see all these uh, old style maps.